That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about It Ends With Us, the third film directed by Justin Baldoni, uh, which is, of course, based on the runaway bestseller by Colleen Hoover. It is being released courtesy of Sony Pictures, releasing on August 9th, 2024. Do you know the director's other films? Uh, no. Five Feet Apart and Clouds in 2020 were his previous titles, although his IMDb profile says that he crushed the box office with his first film. What is this movie about? Lily overcomes a traumatic childhood to embark on a new life. A chance meeting with a neurosurgeon sparks a connection, but Lily begins to see sides of him that remind her of her parents' relationship. What's your pull quote? Although it's about as well-crafted as a discounted IKEA kitchenette, It Ends With Us does manage to land some relevant facets about domestic abuse in its own overtly glossy, ham-fisted way. <laughs> Mine. If an overly long, sexless YA abuse drama with odd casting that reads like an after-school special sounds appealing, It Ends With Us will satisfy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, we both were thinking of comparable films afterwards. Twilight, Fifty Shades of Grey, sprinkle in some anyone but you, some what's love got to do with it. Oh, <laughs> poor Tina. Uh, I, I feel like it exemplifies the actual nexus of Nancy Myers with It's Complicated and Fifty Shades of Grey. But I will say the start to this screening was a lovely one because we got to meet a very nice family who watches our videos. Mm. And while we were speaking to them, they were sitting next to Stevie Wonder. The like Stevie the Wonder. Stevie Wonder. So we stood there like, I, I was focused on the people who we were talking to, but it was surreal that like Stevie Wonder was sitting right there. And I'm assuming it was his wife, lady friend. I, I'm not familiar with his romantic situation, but she was there with him like massaging his neck and they were just enjoying the sun. A couple of lizards. But yeah, that was... A very lovely start to uh -huh. this film. I knew nothing about this movie coming in. I didn't know it was based on a book, what, like anything. I have not read the novel. I did know that there was some controversy from the fans of the novel about the casting of Blake Lively in that she was old, markedly older than the character she's playing in the book. And I think that you can tell and it causes some some ripple effects with the layout of this narrative that I think it, this was adapted by Christy Hall, who as a director herself, her film Daddy-O just opened recently with Sean Penn and Dakota Johnson. But uh, I, I think that maybe she wasn't allowed to modify it correctly for an adaptation that makes sense for Blake Lively's casting. After watching the film, I would assume the character Lily, that's who Blake Lively plays, I would assume she'd be like in her late 20s. Mm -hmm. based on how it all plays out. Based on how it's written. But Blake Lively, I thought Blake Lively was 42 years old. That's how she reads to be in this movie. I like her. She's a beautiful woman. I was surprised to hear she's under 40. But she definitely seems too old to be playing Lily Blossom Bloom. Oh, that name. That name. We know the name's bad because they make fun of it in the movie. But So, yeah, that was odd. It didn't have to be that bad. Your parents named you Lily Blossom Bloom. Um, also, every time I look at her, I think of Willem Belli. Sure. No? Yeah. Who I also like, so it's not like it's shady, but... Sisters. Uh, I, I do like Blake Lively as well. I think she chooses kind of odd films a lot that I really appreciate. I, I think she really ele elevates A Simple Favor. I think she elevates Woody Allen's Cafe Society. I think Age of Adeline is even worth a look, uh, even though... That's a good counterpoint to something like this film. But yeah, I, I, I appreciate her, I feel. The story is Blake Lively plays Lily Blossom Bloom. And we find her like modern day in Boston. Her father has just died. She's sitting on a rooftop sort of thinking about life when a man storms onto the rooftop and like violently kicks a chair. And that man is Ryle, played by the director. Justin Baldoni. His name is Ryle Kincaid. That makes me think of Bowfinger. Kincaid. The neurosurgeon. So uh, they have, I mean, it's not really a meet cute. They sort of bond uh, over 
some interesting what what she's calling naked truths and he is very upfront with her i want to have sex with you and she says i'm not really that girl i'm the kind of girl you take home to your mother even though we never actually see her meet his mother we don't see and they get married we don't see that mama no anyway they uh, meet this night and they're about to be sexual when his phone rings and he has to go perform an emergency surgery and she tells him we're never going to see each other again. At Boston Grace. Even though we live in the same area, I guess. But she moves on and we see that she wants to open up a flower store. And mm -hmm. she does. With the help of her new employee, Jenny Slate. And I, I love Jenny Slate. We'll talk about... We'll talk about yeah. Jenny Slate. Yeah. But, so they're just bebopping, like get, getting this shop open... When one day Jenny Slate's brother shows up to visit her at her new job. Mm -hmm. And guess who her brother is? Ryle Kincaid. And Ryle is so fixated on Lily. They start dating. They take it to the next level. And within that time, the way the abuse is presented initially is kind of like, well, it could have been an accident. Like, the first time it happens... If if you don't count when she met him where he violently kicks a chair, the next time it happens is he's trying to make her breakfast. Like, he puts a frittata in the oven, and it starts to burn. And this fool grabs the hot dish without um, oven mitts on. And so when he burns his hand, he flings it, and it hits Lily. So she gets, like, a black eye. I appreciate the ambiguity that that, that it's, it's taking pains to present because I, I think that's what it does get right about domestic abuse sometimes is how we can make excuses or, sure. choo or choose to look at it from an angle that's Well, we can talk about that, but to finish the story, there are a couple of incidents where there, there's some ambiguous abuse, but we get flashbacks to when Lily was in high school and we see that she had a little boyfriend the homeless boy who lived next door, which we need to talk about, mm -hmm. but his name is Atlas. In Atlas, who lives in Plethora, Maine. Mm -hmm. And in, that's where Lily's from, and her, her family seems to be well off. Her dad's the mayor of Plethora, Maine. Mm -hmm. They live in a mansion, which I find funny that across the street from the mayor's mansion is a condemned building where a teenage boy lives. But uh, And again, we were talking about, that's perfectly normal in L.A., but... Uh, but small town plethora. As a teenage girl, she falls in love with Atlas, and Atlas seems like a really sweet guy. And we need to talk more about their situation because I don't believe that that young lady turned into Blake Lively I and her behavior. But anyway, that young actress though, Isabel Ferrer, I think was my favorite part of the film. Oh, I w I would have just watched a movie with the two teenagers. Mm -hmm. I really liked them, and I really liked both the young Atlas and young Lily. But anyway, we see that when Lily was younger, she witnessed her father be abusive to her mother. So that's part of her, you know, baggage. So now she's with Ryle and they've had this incident where she has a black eye and he has a hurt hand because when he slapped her with the hot, grabbing the hot dish, she pushed him and he fell onto the broken glass. And coincidentally, his hand gets hurt the day before he has a career defining surgery to perform. Anyway, some time passes and they go to eat at a fancy restaurant called Roots. And we had already been there once where we met the server who we find out is Atlas. No reference to Alex Haley, but yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the second time they go, Atlas, who we think is the server, sees Lily with the black eye, Ryle with the hurt hand, puts two and two together, and it culminates in Atlas and Ryle having a physical confrontation at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So things go left, but Ryle and Lily continue their relationship and they end up getting married. Ryle finds out that Lily had Atlas's phone number in her phone. We can get to all of that. Mm -hmm. But there's another situation where he storms off after he tries to... It's kind of ambiguous again, like whether or not he was going to like force sex on her or beat her up. But she ends up getting away and staying with Atlas. Also in that process, she falls down the stairs and hurts herself. Mm -hmm. But when Atlas takes her to the hospital, she finds out she finds out she's pregnant. So the final act of this two plus hour film is her having left Ryle, her husband. Dealing with being pregnant. And then I guess 
it would seem at a point like she's going to get back with Ryle because she lets him come to her mom's house to build a baby crib. And then we see her going to labor at the hospital he works in and he's there. She delivers the baby. Everything seems happy. And then she tells her husband, why don't we name the baby after your dead brother? And we need to talk about the dead brother. Emerson. Mm -hmm. Emerson. We'll just call her Emmy. And he starts crying like this is the nicest thing anyone's done for me. And then she goes, and I want a divorce. And I thought the most powerful section of the film is her saying, you know, if our daughter came to you and said, my boyfriend hit me, pushed me down the stairs, tried to like sexually assault me, what would you tell her? And he says, I would tell her to leave him and never go back. And that's what she does. And then just when you think the film might be over, we get another sequence where some years pass because mm -hmm. we see her daughter being like a bigger kid and she bumps into Atlas again. And it would seem like, because he tells her at that period where he was helping her and took her to the hospital that if she ever wants to fall in love again, come look for him. So he's supposed to be like a decent guy. Uh, on hold. Uh, like perpetually. Uh, perpetually on hold. We need to talk about that. No. Um, no. There is a lot I liked about this movie, but I just think, and I didn't read the book, so I'm assuming the book reads better than this, but there are so many things that are missing that make me... I need to better understand these characters. Yes, it, it, they're not correctly fashioned in a way that uh, makes sense. And it's kind of like a, a, a TV movie of the week about domestic abuse where she's this kind of magical woman that all these men are, these very attractive men are fixated on. Um, initially, because we meet her going to her father's funeral where there, uh, it, it's clear that there are some issues that haven't been dealt with in this family. Amy Morton is the actress playing her mother. I couldn't stand her she felt okay well let's talk about because there's a trifecta of characters that don't quite make sense mm -hmm. to me so the mother mm -hmm. jenny slate mm -hmm. jenny slate's husband did you recognize who that was he's a comedian hassan minaj he was on we, we my, my most hated podcast uh blocks with neil brennan and i thought he was so obnoxious in that he's so obnoxious in this movie i i think very obnoxious. I mean, he's ruinous when he's in the scene. He's ruinous. Uh, Baldoni, I, again, I have nothing to compare to because I haven't seen his previous uh, performances or directorial efforts, but I was immediately put off by him. And it made me question why the person that's playing the abuser thought that they were the best person to direct this runaway success of a novel. Like, why isn't a woman directing this? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I just, oh my God. Okay, so this trifecta of characters are almost like comedic. In, well, Jenny Slate, even though she's not, like, there are no jokes, she's just funny. And I really like her. And I, I did too. enjoy her in this movie, except that she, it almost feels like she should, I could see this character being in, like, Sex and the City 4. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't know, how many movies were there? Two? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Two, Whatever. Two it movies. seems like she could have been in like a Sex and the City movie. Because yeah. she's cutesy, she's rich, and then her husband is just like this D-bag, crypto guy. It just, I just feel like it felt so odd within the story. And then Lily's mom is this abused woman who's kind of, I don't know, she felt like someone's corny sitcom mom who's oblivious to everything that's going on. Every moment with her felt, except for the very last. The only moment that mom has something to say is after the abuse, while Blake is, uh, Lily, Blake Reynolds, uh, Blake Reynolds. <laughs> wow. Blake Lively's character is pregnant, building the crib with her mom. She asks her mom, I guess, finally after 42 years, however old this lady's supposed to be, why did you stay with dad? And her mom says, well, it would have been harder to leave, and I loved him. And that made me emotional, and also like that's the energy the mom should have had from the moment we saw her at the funeral, or that or that energy of like I get that you're being inauthentic because you don't want to deal with actual emotions, but that looks a lot different than the performance that and the writing that we're getting for her here. And and I do really like Jenny Slate. This made me want to go back and rewatch Obvious Child. Uh, I I would much rather see her as the the lead. I think. Okay, let's talk about Lily as a character. We don't know anything about her except she grew up in Plethora, Maine. Her dad was the mayor. She witnessed her dad being abusive to her mom. 
And then one day she sees this boy climb out of a building across the street, clearly homeless, and recognizes him as the boy who rides on her school bus. So the next day she leaves him like a care package. Mm -hmm. He knows it's her and they become quick friends. And she defends him. Some raggedy girls on the bus are making fun of him. And she gets up and like causes a scene and shames those girls. So young Lily seems like a confident, self-assured young person who is kind and giving, like just a really great person. But then we meet Lily as a 40 year old. I don't know what the hell she's been doing. Did she go to college? What did, What's her profession? She is like styled like she could have worked in the office with in the Devil Wears Prada. I don't understand. She's got money or access to fashion. She drives mm -hmm. a nice classic Mercedes, but we don't know anything about what she's been doing all these years. And why is it at this particular moment that her dream of opening a flower shop is coming true? Like I, I just think it would have, as a 20 something, it would have made sense that this dad you're estranged from because of his abusive past uh, left you a bunch of money at his funeral and that allows you to Oh, right. the store. But anyway, Boston. when we meet her with uh, Ryle, she's being very, like, she's playing hard to get. She's saying that I'm the type of girl that you bring home to mom. I can tell that you're into, like, NSA-type situations. But then, ultimately, she's down to clown a little bit. And then she sort of says, like, well, we're never going to see each other again. But during that first meetup, he, she says, well, let's tell a naked truth. And she shares, he says one, which I don't even remember. And then he's like, okay, well, tell me one of yours. And she goes, oh, well, I lost my virginity to a homeless boy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really, that seemed real out of character for the Lily I know in from the flashbacks. In retrospect, that scene seems really odd be, be, because we see that it happened, how she loses her virginity to this uh, young man and how she carries him with her with a tattoo basically that this lady me. has a tattoo representing the love she had for this boy and he's not just a homeless kid he was a runaway who was being abused at home I, I just I really didn't like her when she said that after we finished the film and learned everything that happened, I thought that was a really mean-spirited thing for her to say about this person who meant a lot to her. Because I don't think that she would say it or just leave it like that, maybe as a, a cruel... I think that, again, this is... Uh, in the script, we're trying to, you know, develop these these themes and ideas about these characters, right? And I think that that would have been an opportunity to, for her to say something more along the lines like... A naked truth about me is uh, yeah, I had this relationship with this young man that was very traumatic and th all these feelings have been uprooted because her dad just died. Like there's a, there was a way to finesse that and write that in a way that makes sense for developing the script. Because the actor playing Lily as an adult and the way it's written, she comes across as like a self-assured, resourceful 40-year-old woman mm -hmm. who doesn't need a man to do anything. So I, I think that's where the trouble is for me, that I, I didn't understand Lily. I didn't necessarily like her or understand why this man's so into her. That, that and vice versa, because I feel like a woman, even as a 36-year-old woman, that looks like her and has her confidence would see through his... Uh, she does. She does. In the beginning, she even quite, she laughs in that man's face when he says he's a neurosurgeon. And then when he says, no, I really am, she, she still thinks he's not until he gets the phone call saying he has to go perform right. surgery. And she laughs in his face again, like, oh, wow, I really thought you were lying. But I don't allow, I don't see how she, uh, she allows herself to be finessed by him. And in, right. In fact, with the next scene we see him in is when he shows up with Hassan Minaj and he's like, oh, you're my sister's employer. I felt uh, immediate anxiety because I'm like, this is her store. She's trapped. He knows exactly where she is at all times. I was let down that I was expecting, not that I needed sleeping with the enemy or enough. I mean, I didn't need to be that melodramatic. And like you already alluded to, I, or mentioned, I did appreciate that the abuse was a little more ambiguous because sometimes that is the complexity mm -hmm. of it. It's not full on Ike Turner. We make excuses for things. Right. Yeah. So I so that is one facet of the story that I did appreciate because usually abusive men are drawn like full on monsters and there's no questioning. In this film, the way it's shot initially is, well, he didn't mean to hit her. He, it was a reflex and like she fell down the stairs because she was chasing him and he moved. What I hated, though, was we got a flashback of the three abuse moments where 
it's shot from a different angle, mm-hmm. and we see Ryle looking like like a monster, like Arr. yeah, he he pushes her down the stairs. Yeah, where literally we see him push her, and I, I, I like I just I I would have liked it to be a little more complex and subtle, and because the reason I call it YA is because it's very broad strokes, like very obvious symbolism, down to like <laughs> Riley or Lily has a tattoo of like a a broken heart kind of it looks like a horseshoe to me i don't know where the heart came from but it represents her love for atlas and when ryle realizes that's what the tattoo means this fool tries to bite the tattoo off so then we get a scene with her in the hospital with bite marks (laughs) around the tattoo you know what else is messy though is that that is instigated by both root or roots and uh What's her this norm of her store? Lily's Blooms. Lily's Blooms. Lily, Lily Blooms. Are featured yeah. in some Boston publication about what's uh, who's top who, ten top new 10. businesses in Boston. Can we talk about that? So yeah. Let's talk about Atlas. So we know Atlas. We know more about Atlas than we do Lily because mm-hmm. we find out that his mom was in relationships with men who would abuse Atlas as a young boy, and that's why he ran away. But his plan is he's enrolled in the Marines, I believe. Mm -hmm. So he's going to boot camp after high school. And then she taught him how to garden. But he also tells us he loved to cook. And we we get a scene where he's baking hot chocolate cookies for her. So then, again, I think that the actor playing Lily needed to come across as a woman in her late 20s. Because looking at Blake Lively, I'm like, wow, so she hasn't spoken to this man in 20 plus years I really thought they hadn't spoken in like 25 years. Yeah. Because I thought she was in her 40s. So it's like you let 25 years pass, not keeping up with this boy who you loved, who was like a sweet kid. There was no reason for her not to keep up with him. And her dad, we get a scene where her dad nearly killed him because he found him in bed with her. I just thought that was so cold that she didn't follow up with him. But then we find out that the restaurant is called Roots in honor of her. Mm Mm-hmm. I just thought that made Atlas seem like a chump. Well, he says it and he explicitly talks about details and is asked in this blurb about whether he's seen that girl again and he said yes. And that's what sets Ryle off. But when you met her again, you saw that she was with a new beau. Why would you... That's messy, okay? Uh, Also, so, Ryle. The whole time I kept thinking, like, okay, that must be spelled R-I-A-L. And then we see him... Calling and it's like it's Kyle with an R. Okay, if you asked me how to spell Ryle, I would have said Kyle with an R. So it didn't bother me as much. I thought the name overall was annoying. I also thought Ryle was annoying because he even says at one point, like, I'm so hot, I'm so smart. You're never gonna find someone as hot as me who's not a soap opera or who could be a soap opera star, but I'm a neurosurgeon. He's just like, what the young Lily I knew from the flashbacks. She wouldn't check for a man like that. No, you, you gross. She would make fun of him. She and, wouldn't date him. Uh, your dumbass still opened the oven and tried to grab a hot plate. Like, please. That mean a, a neurosurgeon. A neurosurgeon whose whose hands are the most important part of you, mind you. And and di- and didn't think to the, anyway. Yeah, I I I I just needed to understand how that young lady turned into. A Blake Lively who would date Ryle. And every <laughs> everybody else is so again, Jenny Slate is so too picture perfect. Like she Oh, I wrote down she's the perfect friend. She's a fantasy. She's like as his sister when she learns of the abuse of her brother, as his sister, I would, you know, tell you to get over it, but as your best friend, I'd say if you ever go back to him, I'll never talk to you again. It's like I want more the, the Things aren't resolved in real life so easily like that. And also, what was his name? Brandon Sklenar playing the elder Atlas. Very handsome man. Uh, looks just like, to me, a young Alan Bates mixed with pre-mullet Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, he, he Also, just I, I hate when he confronts her in the bathroom. He corners Lily in the bathroom to tell me what's going on. It's like, this is... We haven't had a chance to reconnect. Who are you doing this? It's to been me? 25 years since I've seen you. Calm down. <laughs> and and she's not played. She's played as a resourceful woman that that is ruining the day that she realizes she's be, she's backed herself into a corner, much like her mother. Yeah. Those, those are all energies that are interesting to play with, uh, in, in my opinion. But uh, I don't know. I just didn't like how this was drawn. No, and again, the just everything is so like just. 
handed to us on a plate. Mm -hmm. Even the opening when the mom says, like, just your eulogy, just pick five things you loved about your dad. And clearly Blake can't do it. She gets up on the podium and we see her with a napkin and she wrote one, two, three, four, five, but it's all blank. And then she looks at her mom and says, no, I can't do it and walks out. Um, there's a point when after the confrontation at the restaurant, Atlas goes to her floral shop and writes down his phone number mm -hmm. and then puts it in her phone case. I thought that was insane, sir. Like it's, is, is this... it's 2023 or four, whatever it's supposed to be set in. Like just put your number in her phone and put it as the Pizza Hut delivery. I mean, I, why, why would you put, cause then you know, as the audience, oh, Ryle's going to find this card and sure enough he does. And that scene was crazy because Ryle and Lily are at his penthouse. They're married and they're on FaceTime with Lily's mom. And who wasn't at the wedding. Telling her, we got married, but sorry, it was kind of a shotgun wedding. Um, and Lily asks Ryle, could you go plug my phone into the charger? You got to do it right now. And he does. And we immediately hear him like break something. Mm -hmm. She runs over there and he looks like he's like he's enraged. And he goes, I dropped your phone. This number came out of your phone case. And I called it. How? It was like four seconds. And then he gets mad and they get into an argument because he thinks that she's cheating on him. With the person who he says anyone but him. Uh -huh. So she could cheat with anybody, just not him. <laughs> also, Blake Lively. Again, this is where the cast. The, I think the writing needs to, you know, match the casting if you're going to make those kind of changes. Because Bla the level of communication, I, I just don't believe a woman of her age would be like, look. And her confidence. And her confidence. Like this is what this is what the, the relate. This is my past. This is what the oh. relationship was. This is how I feel about that person. And that's why it may seem like a, it's secretive, but it's just I haven't had the time to process this because he's just come back to my life. Well. I agree. Use your words. Well, even before that, when they first, when Ryle and Lily go to Root's restaurant so that Ryle can meet her mother for the first time, the three of them are sitting there and that's when she first sees Atlas. I can't believe that a woman like Lily, this adult lady, the way she's presented, wouldn't have immediately said, because her mother knows Atlas, but didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. Why didn't she just say, oh my God, this is Atlas. This is insane. I haven't seen you in 25 years. How are you doing? Like, this is my boyfriend. You know my mama. Like, sit down. Like, can we buy you a drink? And then mm -hmm. he goes, actually, bitch, I own the restaurant. I'll buy you a drink. Right. That, I, I just can't believe that unfolded that way. And that's why I think it needed to be a younger woman whose history we understand better and why she might not have the confidence Yes. To say it. Because as it is, it's like Blake Lively is like Juliette Binoche in Chocolat, where she shows up as this magic chocolatier that's transforming the community. <laughs> that's what the, that's what this flower shop feels like. And I think both of us agreed that the casting of the two men would have been more interesting to have switched. Well, I didn't need Justin Baldoni at all, but I definitely wish it would have been... I don't either, but... The guy playing Atlas should have been Ryle. Mm -hmm. Someone who's disarming. Yeah. Because the minute you see... He, the, he just looks swarthy and like an like a, a it, gunner who's gonna get what he wants. His behavior is red flag factory on the max. Yeah. I don't know how many men that ha, that, that that approach you in that way. That's uh, you are being aggressive and really controlling up front. Yeah. When he and it's just yes, I feel like it would be a younger woman that wouldn't realize when he she says, "Sorry, I'm going to dinner with my mom." He's like, "You didn't tell me about that." Your the the back the hair on the back of your neck didn't go up at that like I know anyway I mean I think maybe like teenage young ladies might find this benefit from... I mean it's PG thirteen and it feels that way I did really like the way the film looked oh uh, Barry Peterson was a cinematographer who does a lot of uh, glossy stuff this film felt glossy to me he did game night and that last Dungeons and Dragons film but there's some nice shots of Boston it feels like a 90s like ABC like TV movie of the week like when when they used to be better mm -hmm. but like glossy like a 2024 you know Amazon Prime movie the, it it unfortunately can't uh, divorce itself from a certain sense of uh, soap opera semantics is, is the layout of this film and again I don't think Justin Baldoni was the person that should have directed this in fact I mean I think uh, 
Sam Taylor Johnson did 50, the first Fifty Shades film, which I think did a disservice for her. I think this would have been more, I, I would have been more interested to see someone like her do this film. And with the casting that she would like with a character that's slightly older, I think she could have fashioned that correctly. And, and I, I think the title is powerful, it evokes something, but I, and I think Blake Lively's performance is quite good in certain moments because I, I felt for this woman. Um, but at the point where she says the title, it's like, I think we, I think we get it. I think we get it. I don't think you need she to say. She says the title at the end when she's holding her newly delivered baby, and she has told her husband, "I want a divorce." He walks out, and she tells her daughter, "It ends with us." Obviously, because I watched my mother be abused. I let your daddy try to whip my ass. We're done. I also felt the same way. Like I think we get it that this is your intention. Because all there were so many other t rich man, poor man, which is a, the title of a famous book and series already. Uh, Pas de fleur. Like, <laughs> what if her, the name of her title, her sh Lily's Lily Blossom Bloom Shop, was Pas de fleur? I thought the movie was too long, and this review is getting too long. What would you give? It ends with us. It is too long. The pacing's off. Um, I think I'm being very nice with two and a half. I would give it two and a half out of five. Yeah. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.